Am I the asshole for calling my fiance selfish for wanting to announce her pregnancy at her cousin's wedding? My fiance, 29 female, and I, 31 male, just found out that we're pregnant. My fiance mentioned that she wanted to wait to announce it at her cousin's wedding, which will be taking place on Sunday. Her cousin and her husband have been struggling to get pregnant even with IVF or tons of others. Recently, they just got some news that their insurance has stopped funding IVF, and not to mention the heartbreak of a recent miscarriage on Mother's Day. They almost understandably held off on the wedding. So, when my fiancé brought it up to me, I told her that it's not at all a good idea. This just seemed so wrong, especially it being at their wedding. I asked if she was going to at least ask her cousin for permission, and she said no, because she wanted it to be a surprise for everyone. I told her it's not the time nor place for that, and it would take the spotlight off the couple. In her family, there hasn't been a baby in three years, so we'd be the first in that time. My fiancé feels that's the perfect time, because it's such a joy, and it's not like she can keep it away forever, and their problems shouldn't keep her from telling something so positive. So it's on them if they turn it negative. I told her that's not the point. She knows what they've been through, and she's being selfish if she actually goes through with that. She cried and claimed I wasn't being supportive, and I shouldn't be calling my pregnant fiancé selfish. She doesn't want me to come with her to the wedding anymore either, feeling as if I'd kill the mood. She hasn't been talking to me either. Edit. So about my fiancé and her cousin's relationship, my fiancé always saw competition in her cousin because her cousin would be better at some things than her. Grades, dancing, cosmetics, etc. since they were kids, and she hates that. Last year they had an argument about it because fiancé felt her cousin bragged too much, whereas my fiancé also mentioned there was one thing that her cousin wasn't good at, but she never said what it was. God. So in shorter terms, the relationship is in between good and bad, but her cousin wanted to invite her to the wedding. I'm guessing to rekindle that. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I could be the asshole for calling my fiancé selfish when she wanted to announce her pregnancy. She is pregnant, so I could have been a bit more sensitive with her and not just called her a name like that. OP, there is, there is an astronomical difference between calling your fiancé selfish and what your fiancé wants to do. There is honestly a laundry list of names and phrases that could have been thrown out that could have made you the asshole for sure, but you chose selfish. If your fiancé also meant that one thing that your cousin is not good at, being having kids, uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Your fiancé is a bad person, let's just put it that way, they, they are a very bad person. Lots of words, actions, thoughts, uh, energy that they're putting out into the universe that's just unwanted and unreasonable. I would say, look at her behavior now and extrapolate where that may take you in the future and if this is someone that you want to be with personally. Anyway, not the asshole. In the comments, Crystal Queen 3000 says, not the asshole. Your fiancé has a bad case of main character syndrome. To the point of actually being unimaginably cruel. OP, this is pretty concerning. If I was OP, I would highly consider warning the cousin, but that could definitely cause marriage problems, or spoiling the surprise ahead of time so she couldn't do it on the wedding day, not the asshole. I came to say exactly this, and honestly OP, I know she's pregnant, but you really should think long and hard about marrying a woman who would do this. I'm sorry to say this, but only narcissistic people would pull this crap at someone else's wedding, much less one where the bride had a recent miscarriage. There are four things you never, ever do at a wedding without express approval from the bride and groom. Wear white, propose, come out, or announce a pregnancy. Your fiancé wants to take the limelight away from her cousin, and that is awful. Good luck, not the asshole, and do not let her ruin that wedding. So, murder is still on the table then? That's a joke, of course. Murdering people is also unacceptable at a wedding. Not the asshole. Hijacking someone's event to make your own announcement is extremely rude and selfish. Add on that the couple is having trouble getting pregnant themselves, it's that times 10. You know what would be fun? If we announced this at the wedding so we can simultaneously take away from their big day and trigger their latent trauma from their troubles with pregnancy. Two birds, one asshole. God, I hope not. 
the fiancé should open her announcement with, Well, your wedding has been great fun so far. Now let me completely ruin any memory you might have of it. And now, on to the update. Sorry for the long wait, as I've been going through some things. Me and my fiancé breaking up, work, death of my grandfather, etc. So I didn't expect to get a bunch of replies to my post, but a lot of them were very helpful. My ex was determined to go to the wedding, despite my protests, and even planned out how she was going to be refusing alcohol when offered. I did tell my ex's parents about what she was planning on doing. I didn't want to tell the groom or bride because I wouldn't know how to put it in words that would make the whole situation any less awful. Ex's parents did end up telling the bride's parents, and then they told the bride. The bride was so upset that she, unfortunately, called off the wedding. Everyone wanted her to continue it though, and then invite my ex for a couple of plans that the guests had thought of. For example, when my ex announced it, everyone would just stay nonchalant and not give her the excited reaction that she was hoping for, and the classic just don't invite her plan. The bride, understandably, just wanted to be left alone, and she just texted my fiancé a very long paragraph, telling her what a horrible person she was. She just decided not to do the wedding anymore, and her fiancé was very heartbroken. But all in all, they were both grateful for me. My ex instantly knew that I was the cause of all of this, and she was furious at me, even more because I posted about it here, but also said a pretty sick thing about how she was still pretty much one anyways. I just decided to break up with her myself after that. Some of her family members are kind of upset with me, as they believe I just caused a bunch of drama. Now I'm currently in the works of talking to an attorney, as my ex told me that I will not be seeing the baby after they're born. So all of that on top of grief, working, breakup, being called a mess starter by some of her family, and still feeling like shit because either way, the bride and groom were heartbroken. It's just putting a bunch of anxiety and stress on me. Anyways, here's the long-awaited update. Any questions, I'll answer. Edit. So they were pretty much already contemplating on cancelling the wedding. Family members did stress her out over her miscarriage and cancelling. Her fiancé's family were excessive about she couldn't carry a baby to full term like a real woman. Not to mention her own family went around spreading her miscarriage like a wildfire, which is how my ex and I found out. They told it to co-workers even. It's not the first time that my ex has also interrupted her cousin's big events. For example, when turning 17, my ex cake smashed her, which wasn't fun for her cousin. Their first pregnancy announcement, which was the miscarriage, was ruined because my ex blurted the news out. But her cousins told her to get over that because it was a miscarriage anyway, so she's told by family members. This is what I was told when asking her fiancé. So she's been at a breaking point for a while. She was considering just still continuing the wedding, but she wanted to be left alone. They didn't call off the wedding permanently, just until the bride has cooled herself down. In the comments, Interbang Smoose says, Oh my god, OP, you did the right thing, which very often is also the hard thing. It's not very comforting, but it's something. It's really unfortunate that you didn't find out about your ex before you tied yourself up to her with a child, because she's not going to make it easy. Keep doing the right thing, and good luck with the forthcoming munchkin. They're amazing at refocusing your priorities. How sad for her cousin. I hate that she let your horrible ex ruin what should have been a special day. Honestly, the fact that your ex says that she won anyway shows that it was never actually about wanting to announce the pregnancy, just about hurting her cousin for some reason. Don't back down fighting for your rights to your child. I'm very concerned about a person like that having sole custody over a living, breathing human being. I'm concerned about this baby. The timing of it almost makes it seem like your ex got pregnant just to show up her cousin. I'm glad you're getting a lawyer early. Yeah, that was my theory when OP originally posted. Mine was that she was lying. The timing just seemed so coincidental, and I've seen where people get fake positive tests. As deranged as the ex sounded, it didn't seem too far-fetched. Damn, never thought about the pregnancy may be fake. OP, be aware. Am I the asshole for leaving a note on my neighbor's doorstep about his screaming children? I have lived in the same apartment building for about five years. Throughout my time here, I've had many neighbors come and go, and I've never had any noise issues. However, last year, a new neighbor moved in three units down. He's about 40 and has three children under the age of four. 
For months, I have listened to his children scream and cry all day long, whether it be in his apartment or in the hallway. At first, I tried to ignore the behavior as I felt bad. It appeared that he was a newly single father and was struggling. However, as time went on, it became clear that he just straight up lets his kids behave however they want. For example, when they shriek at the top of their lungs in the hallway slash right outside my door, he never says, shh, let's be quiet, or anything at all. He just lets it happen without a peep. Additionally, I've come to realize the frequency and the volume of the screaming, crying, shrieking is way beyond what is normal. I'd venture to say that I hear anywhere from 10 to 15 full-on tantrums every single day, all of which are ear-piercingly loud. And like I said, he does not say or do anything about these tantrums. It's now at the point where I find myself frustrated and annoyed in my own home all the time. Right now, I'm working on a paper in my apartment, and I can't even concentrate because all I can hear are his children. Because of this, I wrote a note, a polite one, and left it on his doorstep. Essentially, my note said that I sympathized with him, but the noise is out of control. I also stressed that I wanted to confront him directly first. I realized that sounds hypocritical since I left an anonymous note, rather than going straight to management. Am I the asshole for leaving this note? Should I have handled it differently? In the comments, Espin Jack says, Whether divorced or widowed, both circumstances come with the possibility of problematic outcomes, which seems to have happened. Not the asshole, but walk a mile in his shoes. It has to suck raising three children under the age of four alone. I'm not saying that you did anything wrong, you didn't, but put on your empathy shoes and dig deep. This person has a seriously shitty situation and doesn't have the means or a handle on how to make things better. The kids are acting out over the loss of their mother, whether from death or divorce. The guy isn't coping well, whether from death or divorce. I hope your note sparked something in the guy's brain that said, there's a problem here that needs to be addressed. And if not, expect more noise. Sorry. Joe's Wasted Time says, you're the asshole. What do you think he's going to do exactly with three children under four? Spend all day elsewhere so you can be comfortable? You live in a shared space. Get earplugs. OP replies, I don't know, maybe tell his child to be quiet when she's shrieking in the hallway at the top of her lungs for no reason, and apologize to all the neighbors who opened their doors to see what the commotion was about? Joe replies to OP, You assume he hasn't already tried to quiet the kids. You think he enjoys hearing them scream? You should apologize. OP replies, Considering he wears headphones all day while he games? No, I don't think he has the pleasure of hearing them scream all day like the rest of us do. How would you even know that? OP replies, Because he told my husband that he's an avid gamer and games pretty much all day long. He's also a tech geek and retired. He sold some sort of major software. Strong Warm Sweet says, You're the asshole. That's totally normal for three children under the age of four. I'm not sure what you believe your note will accomplish. OP replies, According to professionals, it is actually not normal for children to have that many tantrums in a 24-hour time span. I thought you meant combined, like each one having four or five. That is totally normal. It depends on the kid's natural temperament, though. I'm sure some kids have none. It's not something the parent is doing wrong, though. It is biological temperament. Something tells me by professionals, you mean Google. OP replies, A child's behavior has a direct relationship with their environment and how they are parented. It is not something that's 100% dependent on their natural temperament. And now, on to the update. So after reading the comments on my original post, I decided to remove the note before my neighbor saw it. I took what some of you said into consideration. Perhaps I just needed to be more patient. I decided that if the noise issue escalated, then I would do something. Otherwise, I would just suck it up and use headphones like some of you advised. Well, today his children screamed slash shrieked four times within a one hour period in the hallway. This was right by my door about two feet away from my apartment. The fourth time it happened, I opened my door and said, please don't scream in the hallway, guys. Once I said this, he told me that his kids are allowed to scream in the hallway or anywhere else in the building that they feel like. I told him that actually, no, they're not, according to our lease. 
He then told me to suck it up and contact management and not to talk to him. After our conversation, he told all three of his kids, you can be as loud as you want in here, and then shot me a nasty look and proceeded to walk to the stairs. Once he said that, all three kids started squealing as loud as possible on purpose. I sent management an email and they're talking to him first thing in the morning. I know some of you suggested that I do this in the first place and I wish I did. Update 2.0 I just went down to the management office to follow up with the manager. She said she had a meeting set for today at 1pm with the resident. She immediately contacted him when I emailed her last night. But then today, he emailed her saying he could no longer make the 1pm meeting and asked why he had to come down. He's in his apartment right now doing nothing. He doesn't work. She told him that he is in violation of his lease and it's best if he comes down. Apparently, he didn't reply to her. She told me that if he doesn't come down to meet with her, she is going to draft an official lease violation letter and begin the process of eviction. I was blown away. She's a great manager. She told me that his reaction, telling me his kids are allowed to yell and telling the kids to keep yelling, is the reason for how she's handling this, not purely the noise complaints. She said she's horrified and disgusted that somebody would handle the situation this way. Her and I both agreed that it was strange that he would encourage me to not speak to him and to contact management rather than just simply telling his kids shush and appreciating that I said something to him directly. Update 3. After I talked with management, I saw my neighbor bring his children to their mother's house. He has been in his apartment alone for the last few days and hasn't come out. He has all the blinds drawn. He posted the following status on social media. I am the perfect success in all areas of life. My husband follows him, which is how I know this. I think he's pretending that he's not home to avoid both myself and management. I don't know what to make of it, and I don't plan on getting involved. In the comments, better take some recordings as proof, otherwise loud is subjective. Paul Ozio says, in my experience, even with recordings, it's subjective. When I complained about neighbors having loud parties sometimes going on till 6am, I had recordings but the council told me that one of the things they might have to do before they could make any sanctions would be to set up their own recording equipment to check the actual decibel level. A phone recording or whatever wasn't good enough because you can't get a true indication of the sound level. Phones have volume buttons. This is an area heavily populated with university students who normally only stay for one to two years. So nothing ever happens because they can move out before it can. Then the next students arrive and the process starts again. It's been better in the last year or two though. The Riker Maneuver says, you should also get a cheap decimal meter and record the noise volumes when his kids are being loud. Document, document, document. If you can prove a behavior of excess noise over time, it will help give the management team the ammunition they need to force him out of the complex slash building. Our next post is titled, Am I the asshole for walking out on a date I didn't know that I was on? My 39 male relationship of 11 years with my ex ended three and a bit years ago. I decided then that that was a last relationship for me and I didn't want a relationship again. Life isn't all that bad. For some reason though, people have started to get a bit weird about it, especially my colleagues, and mainly women. I can't work that one out, as the dudes I know are a lot more chill about it usually, who think that they know better than me, tell me I don't want to get lonely, am a great catch, have a lot to offer, etc. I had such a discussion like that a couple of weeks ago at work, particularly with one colleague S, 30 female, who talks about it a lot. And I don't know why, because she's married. S is leaving, and because we're friends, I was going to meet her on Monday for a coffee slash meal. So I turn up, and she's not there, so I text her. As I do, and I think I'm waiting, I see an old colleague, A, who both me and S used to work with in other jobs. So I say hi to A, and make small talk for a bit, and I say something like, I wonder where S is? And A goes, I don't know what you mean. I thought the date was between us two. I then put two and two together and realized that S set me up on a date without me realizing and A thinking I know I'm on a date. So I say basically to A, sorry, but I'm leaving. Sorry S wasted her time and I go. I then ring S and she doesn't answer, so I send her a really angry text. 
Later, I get a call from her asking what happened. Then I told her. She ignored all of my anger and went, So you walked out on A? What the F, man? That's so not cool. You should have at least stayed. I ignored her and hung up. I go into work the next day, and everyone knows, as she's already told them, and they said I shouldn't have gone mad at S, as she was only doing me a favor. One colleague in particular said he would have loved to go on a date with someone as hot as A. Presumably he's seen a picture then. I then get DIY therapy advice. I'm wasting my life. I shouldn't be lonely. I need therapy, etc. I told them to F off and stop watching Dr. Phil. Today, the atmosphere is really icy. Am I the asshole for it at all? I'm gonna go with absolutely not. S started this drama, and then she continued the drama at work, and turned everyone against you, creating a hostile work environment. You have clearly communicated your relationship preferences, your dating preferences, and you have tried to fix the situation at work, and everyone decides to give you advice that you don't need or want. I don't blame you for reacting the way you did. I don't blame you for walking out on that date. You should have been told this in advance so that you could politely decline it, but S thinks that she knows better because... I, who knows why she knows better? S sounds just bored in her own life and like, oh, I'm gonna play the matchmaker, it's gonna be like a movie. S, uh, no. Delirious, delusional, dysfunctional. These things don't work in the real world, S. Get out of your fantasy. In the comments, some coyote 1409 says, S should mind her effing business. Your colleagues should mind their own business and go on a date with A if they want to. Not the asshole. That's your life. No one can force you into doing that. Good luck and don't apologize. You did nothing wrong and your anger towards S is normal. Not saying this will happen for OP, but when I finally had sworn off all relationships and just stopped looking or caring, I met my current wife. It's almost like when the pressure is off and people truly be themselves, others can tell and will respond accordingly. This happened to me. After a terrible break, I wasn't looking for anyone. I was single for over a year. I happened to message someone to ask them a question. We were responding to each other on a post when the OP shut off the comments, so I messaged him. Something I never do. He responded a few days later. He answered my question and I said thank you and have a nice life. He said something funny to respond and we kept messaging. Now I'm totally in love. We will be celebrating one year together in August. Same here. I'd split up with my boyfriend of four and a half years so wasn't looking for anyone at all. Me and my friend were messing around on a site where you posted your photo and people would rate you out of 10. She was trying to give me an ego boost because my ex cheated on me. A guy messaged to say hi. I just have to say you have the most amazing blue eyes. I said thank you so much, but explained that my friend posted my pic for a joke, and I wasn't interested in meeting anyone so didn't want to give the wrong impression. He never gave up though. We chatted for 18 months before I moved countries to be with him. We've been married 16 years now and have an 11 year old son. After I was told I would never have children. So it's amazing how sometimes things just kind of fall into place without you even realizing. And now, on to the update. You're alright. Poor A had no idea at all. So I've just dropped her a line on her LinkedIn. It's the only contact details I have for her, and apologized for my reaction, explained why, and said it's no reflection on her at all. She didn't deserve that. Second update. Just heard back from her on LinkedIn. She said that I have nothing to apologize for. She totally understands and said she is absolutely livid with S. I replied back thanking her for her understanding. And I have no idea why, but I invited her for a coffee so we could catch up properly. I wasn't expecting to do that, but I did. Unfortunately, that is the last update for that one. If there is another update, which is very unlikely, I will cover it in the future, but I'd love to know what you guys think of that one down in the comments below. Let me know. And our next post is by user OppositeCobbler845, titled, Am I the asshole for stepping down from my maid of honor position after being publicly humiliated by the bride? I'm 25 female, and the bride is also 25 female. We'll call her M. We met freshman year of college back in 2016 and became friends. Shortly after returning home from the military a few months ago, she got engaged to a mutual friend. We'll call him A. 
M asked me to be her maid of honor, and I happily took the position. For months now, I've repeatedly asked her if there was anything for me to do, and if she needed any help. Last month, she announced that she was pregnant, and I've made sure to check on her as much as I can. She has repeatedly told me that I don't need to help or do anything for her or the wedding. Yesterday, she called to tell me to be at a dress fitting that was taking place not even 30 minutes later. So yes, I was informed last minute and had to reschedule a meeting with my PT, which was fine, and my PT understood how important it was. After arriving at the dress fitting, M started yelling at me, and even went as far as pushing me for not fulfilling my role as the maid of honor and being late, even though she's told me not to do anything other than my speech and informed me of every event last minute. I apologized. I assumed she was just stressed and didn't want to upset her any further. I thought it was over after she told me to get my shit together, but nope. She decided that it was a good idea to publicly slalala shame me for a sexual assault that happened to me as a child. Even her own mother asked her what the hell she said, and she repeated it even louder to where everyone heard it. I didn't know if I should cry or beat the hell out of her, but I left instead. She knew that I never fully recovered from that and basically knows all of my triggers. I went straight to the gym and asked my job to get me in some lead therapy. I work at a shooting range. It didn't help and multiple of M's friends were calling and texting me, so of course I turned off my phone and went home. I'm not proud of what I did once I went home. I pretty much drunk like the sailor I once was and scrolled through all of the messages that I received. Well, M wasn't very happy that I left the dress fitting and made sure to rip my ass apart through text and online. One post stated that my behavior was the reason why I didn't have any friends when I returned home and I failed in the Navy. I had to leave because I had stage 3 breast cancer and was recently cleared of it. This morning she called me to tell me that I had no right to leaving when she needed me and that I now have to pay for my own dress. I told her that she had no right to say what she said or to even make my personal trauma public and to find a new maid of honor before hanging up. I have even gone as far as cutting off all ties to her by blocking her and anyone that tried shaming me for walking away. So am I the asshole? I can see why she wants to frame this as you being the asshole here, but your response to the absolute garbage coming out of her mouth pales in comparison, you know? I don't think anything that you've done here warrants an asshole judgement. You've pulled out. You've done the most respectful thing in response to a situation like that. I'll be honest. I'll, I'll be very honest here. She is genuinely lucky that your response to trauma and your response to situations like this is not to beat the shit out of her, not to like tear her eyes out, because there are definitely people that will respond in that way. I can see that being a situation where maybe you'd be the asshole for beating her half to death, but even then I'd probably think you're a bit justified for it. It doesn't sound like it, but internally I am lost for words that someone can be this low. Someone can do this to you. That is genuinely disgusting. There is no timeline. There is no universe in which you're an asshole for this situation, OP. Not the asshole. In the comments, Organization Double Sixty says, Anyone who said that you were in the wrong needs to get cut out of your life immediately. Not the asshole. People suck. You trusted her with a story that causes you pain, and she used it to cause you pain. Bridezilla is no excuse to treat someone you supposedly care about in such a terrible manner. And then shamed her for leaving the military because she had breast cancer? I hope that bride has the wedding she deserves. Not the asshole. Walk away from that train wreck who used to be a friend and block her for how she treated you. Ugh, someone should let the fiancé know that it's an interspecies marriage. He's human, and OP's former friend is a scum-sucking nematode. OP, walk far away from this mess, as the previous comment says. You did the right thing by blocking everyone who tried reasoning in her favor. Edit, due to the protests by folks about how nematodes are useful, why don't we amend that to a sewer-dwelling troglodyte who should be hit on the head by a passing flying toilet? From another Navy vet who is currently being treated for breast cancer, you don't need that kind of trash in your life. She is nasty. Lead therapy is awesome, by the way. And now, onto the updates. Wasn't sure how to do an update on here. 
M's mum, we'll call her Jay, posted online about what really happened to the dress fitting, and she apologised to me. We had a good talk about the next steps, and I told her that I was washing my hands of M. She is supporting my decision, and wants me to at least keep in touch with her, since I've already been adopted into the family. She suggested that maybe it's a jealousy issue because she won't stop talking about how successful I am. What she doesn't know is that jealousy issue is there because she won't stop talking to people about how successful I am and that I'm basically retired now. I did tell Jay that I'm nowhere near successful nor near retirement. I've just always been working my ass off to get what I need. I also found out that M reached out to my fiancé to tell him that I'm cheating. I didn't and will never cheat. After having a long talk, he told me that we no longer had to hide our own engagement, we didn't announce it because we didn't want to take the light off M and her fiancé. The plan was to announce it a few days after the wedding. My fiancé made the announcement online after our talk. I'll try to answer some questions on here as well. Some have asked what did I do to M, and I really have no idea. No one else can figure it out either. She wasn't this way when I left for the military, but maybe I was just blind back then. I was also gone for a while, and we barely had the chance to keep in touch, but I always tried to, which is kinda hard to stay in contact with people when you're on a ship miles and miles away. I know that over time people do change, and I wasn't expecting everyone to just pretend that I didn't leave for a few years, because I did. My main focus when I returned home was to be with my adopted family and caught up with my little brothers. Her fiancé does know about what happened because her parents told him the truth and he was pissed. We did talk and about how I was doing and that's about it. He said he's been having doubts and I told him that I wanted nothing to do with it. The last thing I need right now is to be blamed for everything being called off. I also know that the maid of honor plays a big role in planning the wedding but for some reason I was the only person not helping. It was probably a setup for all I know but... I don't know. I did try to help her, but she didn't want my help, so after a while of asking, I just stopped asking. I'm also not abusing alcohol. That was the first time I've used it to try to fix my emotions. Was never much of a drinker, but I did decide to just stay away from it until I know for sure that it won't be a problem in the future. I did start seeing a therapist after leaving the military. I'm still readjusting to being out as well. Someone suggested that I sleep with her fiancé. Nope, I'm good with the one that I have. I think my fiancé posting about our engagement was his way to say F you to her. My wedding was ruined. I've debated about posting this, but I have to rant to someone. Me, 23 female, and my now husband, Josh, 26 male, had our wedding last week. At first, everything was beautiful. I got married to my high school sweetheart and was so happy. It felt like my fairy tale come true. I felt like a princess. While I'm taking photos with my bridesmaids, I see Josh's cousin Nicole with a girl I'll call her Sarah I'm unfamiliar with. She seems non-talkative but is friendly to me at first. We finish our photos and go inside to relax and chat before I walk down the aisle. A long while later, after the vows were exchanged, I bump into Sarah while on my way to the food table. She's clearly intoxicated, but through her slurred speaking, I could hear her ranting about how crowded the venue was, but then it escalates. I was getting food for my mum when she said to me that she's surprised Josh married someone like me because Josh could do better than me. I tried to laugh it off and I told her that I was very lucky to have him. The interaction left me feeling upset, but I brushed it off as her just being drunk and I started drinking too and soon forgot about it. Time goes past and I'm feeling good. Me and my husband, along with all the guests, were dancing. Suddenly, I hear a crashing sound near the food table, and all of us rush over to see what was happening. I see Sarah on the ground sobbing hysterically, and Nicole was trying to calm her down. She had completely smashed my wedding cake and ripped the decorations. My heart was broken to see my wedding cake completely destroyed, but I tried to ask what was wrong, and Sarah started screaming and cursing at me. I was confused and drunk, so I started shouting back and I ordered my husband to kick her out. He didn't want to, and he told me that she should be allowed to stay since she was a friend. I argued with him and told him that she's ruined my wedding. It eventually took my husband and Nicole to get her under control and to convince her to go home. 
Nicole left with Sarah, and when my husband came back, he looked angry with me. He completely blew me off for the rest of the night, and I could tell the atmosphere was now awkward for all of my guests. The next day, my husband lectured me about how I hurt Sarah's feelings and demanded that I apologize to her. We argued and he slept on the couch. Things eventually cooled down, so I tried to talk to him about it the following days, but he shut me down and just told me that I was being overdramatic about the situation. I've never even seen Sarah until my wedding. I have no clue why she would lash out like that. I'm hurt that my husband doesn't see my perspective. Even though she was drunk, she ruined my special day, and now I can't think of the happy memories I have because I can only think of that incident. Sorry for the long read. Thanks for listening. I guess all I have to say about this situation is I'm sorry that Sarah did that. I want to know why your husband is defending Sarah. That seems really fishy and suspicious. And I want to know why Sarah did that because that seems like it came out of nowhere. And it seems as though people are also defending Sarah in this situation. Why has no one got your back? If this were an Am I the Asshole post, I'd say you're definitely not the asshole, and your husband is firmly in the asshole camp, but it's not, so... In the comments, Accomplished Area says, They were a thing, or are a thing. Not too late to get out so you don't have to deal with him. I can't believe your husband defended his friend, rather than defending you on your wedding day and forced you to apologize to his friend because you hurt her feelings. Your husband blames you for ruining the wedding instead of Sarah. It feels like your husband married Sarah that day and not you. It clearly shows that he is not concerned with your feelings, but he is more concerned with Sarah's feelings. That's where I'm stuck. He defended this random woman who destroyed the cake and decorations, yelled drunkenly at the bride that he deserves better. It's not that bad? Excuse me? How long have you been sleeping with Sarah there, Mr. New Husband? I would bet good money that Sarah is no stranger to the new husband. Only thing that makes sense. Ding ding ding, I'm betting there is much more to the relationship than OP realizes. I met my now husband at work. One night, early on in our dating relationship, we were at a happy hour with a bunch of co-workers, and they figured out really quickly that we were together. Then, fairly quickly, this one girl who was previously nice enough to me just became more and more hostile towards me as the night went on. I was so confused. I kept trying to defuse the situation, but the more she drank, the more she came at me over trivial things. After the night was over, and I was talking to him about my evening, he told me that she and he had previously dated, nothing official, but he just let it fizzle out as he lost interest. All of a sudden, her behavior made much more sense to me. In my case, at that time, we were new enough that I wouldn't have expected him to have told me this prior to the event. If I was OP, and it later comes out that these two have a history, I would be hella pissed off that he didn't mention it the second she started behaving badly at the wedding. True, but they are both young and were high school sweethearts. So if this Sarah is an ex, husband Dia has to explain how he didn't cheat. Even if there wasn't any cheating, this was some serious boundary stomping. We can now recognize that smashing a cake into the wife's face when she said not to is a sign that the marriage won't last a year due to continued boundary stomping and disrespect. In this case, OP is in serious trouble with this man. And now, on to the update. Firstly, I'm going to try to make this as short as possible. I know this update isn't going to be very shocking, but I at least want to explain myself a bit better. I started thinking and taking everyone's replies into consideration, and I called Nicole. I demanded she tell me the truth, and she eventually did. You all were right. Sarah and Josh were a thing. Yes, he cheated on me. For some backstory, Josh and I have known each other since elementary school. We grew up together and started dating freshman year of high school. He was my first everything. I've never loved someone the way that I love him. I didn't want to believe Nicole when she confirmed my suspicions. When she told me he cheated on me, my heart sank and I haven't stopped feeling nauseous. I'm completely devastated. Now, how could I be so foolish? How couldn't I see what was laid out right in front of me? Is this even real? Well, Sarah went to a different high school than me and Josh. Nicole introduced Sarah and Josh. She knew that he was taken, but she's never liked me because I'm mixed. He dated Sarah while he was dating me through all of high school. When we graduated, he ended things with Sarah. He wasn't currently cheating on me, 
but Sarah was still angry that Josh had ghosted her, so she took it out on me. Nicole brought her to the wedding, knowing that Sarah wanted some type of revenge. I didn't want to believe that the love of my life, my whole world, the person I cherished the most, could do this to me. He cheated on me for four whole years, and I was completely oblivious. I don't want to lose him, but I can't look at him the same. He's always been so sweet, so caring of me, so loving. He has no clue that I know, and I'm not sure how to bring it up to him. I wish this wasn't real. I wish I could wake up from this terrible nightmare. When I confront him, I'll update if anything important happens. And for anyone that's been kind to me, thank you so much. I wouldn't wish this upon anyone. In the comments, I am really sorry this happened to you, and I hope it gets better. However, are you planning on staying with this man? Because I certainly wouldn't. He cheated on you for four whole years and didn't even bother to tell you. Who knows what more he keeps hidden from you? I really suggest you divorce this man because you deserve so much better than a cheating scum. I know it'll be hard. However, you have to let him go for yourself to be happy. You will eventually get paranoid of everything he does. So please divorce him. It'll be tough, but I believe you can get through it. OP says, I don't plan on staying with him, but the legal aspect of going through a divorce is stressing me out. I know I shouldn't want to stay with him, but there is a part of me that wants to. However, even if it's tough, I plan to leave him as soon as I can. I know if I let him get away with this, he will just do it again. Thank you so much for your kind words. Nicole, whose problem is that you're mixed, brought Sarah so she could get her revenge, and no one else did anything to address the situation then or after either? Are you sure Nicole is the only racist in the family that you've joined? And are you sure that your husband, treating you poorly, isn't his version of racist behavior? I'm proud of you for getting to the bottom of it and deciding to leave. He may have been sweet to you, but he's a piece of shit, and a gold-covered turd is still a turd. OP says, My husband, his parents, and most of his family have never been racist to me, but Nicole and her dad has. Since I don't see them often, and unfortunately I'm not a stranger to racist comments, I looked past that. My husband has always apologized for their behavior and shuts them down when they say something derogatory towards me. But I do agree with you, he's not the person that I thought I married. Well then, I'm glad he at least did that much, and I'm sure you wouldn't marry someone who didn't do that. I'm sorry you have to go through this. I do find it hard to believe that no one but Nicole knew that he was two-timing, and I hope I'm wrong, but there may still be more to unearth here and other players to reveal. Good luck with everything. And now, onto the second update. So I want to start off by clarifying a few things. People keep asking how he was loving and caring if he did this to you. He brings me flowers every week, he brings me lunch to my work, he cooks for me, he takes me on a fancy date once a month, he takes care of my mother, he offers to pay for everything, he always tells me how much he loves me, and he used to make me feel so safe. I would have never married him if I knew that he would put me through all of this. I know this story is hard to believe, but it's not just a story. This is my life. Also, turns out the cheating was actually going on for closer to six years. Yes, she was the only girl that he cheated with. I'm upset that Sarah destroyed my marriage, but I know it's ultimately Josh's fault. Anyway, Josh gets off work at 10pm, so I stayed up to talk to him. I made Nicole promise me not to tell him that I know, and shockingly, she stayed true to her promise. He came through the door and I called him to sit with me while I was at the kitchen table. I told him that I knew everything. At first I was shouting and ranting to him, but then it turned into me begging him to prove to me that it wasn't true. Of course, it was true, and after a while he confessed to everything. Hearing it from him made it all too real. He tried to argue that since it was in high school it shouldn't affect me that much, and that it was a stupid mistake. Yeah, a stupid mistake he let go on for over five years. I know we were young, but he knew better. He begged me to stay and told me how sorry he was for everything that he's put me through. I told him how much I love him, but I can't stay with him. I asked him why he defended her over me, and he said he didn't want to upset her because he knew how psycho she can be. I know he still loves her, or at least cares about her, because why would he still defend her years later? I can't just cut him out of my life yet. The house we live in and my car is all in his name. Not only have I lost my husband, but I have lost my whole life. 
After I made it clear to him that I was leaving him, he got angry and we started arguing. He tried to say at least he wasn't still cheating, but I don't care. It still hurts the same. I called my mum and told her everything, so she's letting me stay with her for now. Since I live in Pennsylvania, I have 60 days to get my marriage annulled, which I plan to do. Josh keeps trying to call me, but I'm not answering it. He showed me what love is, but now he's ruined love for me. I can't see myself ever dating and trusting someone like this again. Not only was my wedding destroyed, but my whole life is now destroyed. I have no car, no house, he has full access to my bank account, and I'm sure he'll fight to keep the dogs. If anyone wants an update on when I go to get my stuff, I'll give one. None of his family apart from Nicole know that he cheated or anything about what's going on. I loved his parents and they loved me too. His dad took me in after I lost mine. As for Nicole and Sarah, they've tried to contact me but I haven't replied. Please let me be clear when I say that when you are so blindly in love, you never consider the one person you love and trust the most in this world to be cheating on you. My lawyer said he has to give me everything I paid for and I should get my bank information changed as soon as possible. My lawyer also said getting my marriage annulled would be the best option. If I can prove that my car has been paid by me, then he has to give it to me. But right now, there's nothing I can do about my car or house since it is all legally in his name. My lawyer is fighting for me though. I'm praying that Josh will give me the dog. Lastly, thank you again to anyone who has been kind to me throughout this. I hate reading comments because most are negative and it keeps me thinking about this whole situation. I appreciate any of you who have supported me and gave me advice more than you know. It's really helped me through this disaster and without you guys talking some sense into me, I think I would have just stayed with him. Now I know that he isn't the man that I thought I married, and I don't want him to be the father of my children anymore. I'm not sure if I'll update again. I might if something interesting happens. Goodbye for now. In the comments, the veteran barista 54 says, Hey girl, I'm glad you updated. You said that my previous comment on how I sort of know what you're going through helped a lot. Well, I'm about to try and help you some more. I also had my scenario happen when I was 23, and I am now 30. And I was married for 9 months, not just a week or so. It was way more abusive, and he treated me extremely well in front of others. Anyways, I'm so proud of you for making this decision, knowing that if he could keep this huge secret from you for years and still defend her on your very important day, that he's not worthy of you, your body, or your life. I know how much pain you're in, and you feel betrayed in the worst way. You're going to come out of this so unbelievably strong and independent. You should be proud of yourself though for being this dedicated to your beliefs and knowing that you deserve the best. I want you to find who you are without a man beside you because you'll realize how powerful you are. I'm wishing you all the very best OP, I really am. Feel free to message me anytime if you need someone to talk to. And OP replies, thank you so much. You've helped me more than you'll ever know. I'm so sorry that happened to you. I can't believe other women go through this. I don't know how these men sleep at night after putting people through this. And now onto the third and final update. Sorry for the inactivity. I haven't been feeling too well, but I'm a bit better now. I'm glad some of you wanted an update because I have one to tell. At first, Josh tried to keep my things in an effort to persuade me to get back with him. He stopped that after a day or two though. The great news is that I got my car and my ex-husband gave me my dog without me having to take him to court. I could have gotten it anyway, but him just giving it over made things a lot easier on me. My bank information has changed and he didn't try to take any of my money. I've still lost my home, but there's nothing that I can do about that at the moment. My lawyer has worked so hard for me and I'm so grateful to him. I had a calmer conversation with my ex when I was over to get my stuff and I've gotten a bit of closure. We talked about all of our memories and had kind of our final conversation. He apologized for everything, said he understood why I was leaving him, and told me if I wanted him to leave me alone, he would. My marriage was annulled, but I'm kind of devastated that it's like it never happened now. The reason why Sarah and Nicole were calling me is because they tried to tell me that I'm ruining his reputation and being a drama queen about something that happened years ago. I've blocked both of them now. Every time someone asks about why our marriage was annulled, I tell them the truth, and that's upsetting him. He doesn't like that his family and co-workers know about how much of a prick he is. I wasn't going to tell his family because I don't think that's my place, but they know now anyway. 
His parents caught wind of what happened and called me to apologize and check up on me. They were like my second parents. I'm forever grateful to them for taking me in as their own. I'm truly going to miss having them as my in-laws. I'm living with my mom as of now, but I'm looking for cheap apartments nearby. I've never lived by myself, so I'm pretty scared of it. To my knowledge, my ex and Sarah didn't get back in contact and from the looks of things don't plan to in the future. To those asking why my things are in his name, I obviously didn't think that it'd end like this. I trusted him with my life, and he made a lot more money than I did. It was better to let him handle the finances. Thankfully, he hasn't screwed me over by following through with his threats to keep my car and stuff. I know I'm only 23, I know I have a lot of life left in me, but it's not feeling like that right now. I'm still in shock about everything, and am definitely in denial. I know I'll be okay eventually, but this has screwed my whole perspective of love up. My life has taken a full turn from what should have been the happiest moment of my life. I'm bitter. I think about what if I would have done something different, maybe then he wouldn't have done all this, and I keep making excuses for him. In some type of way, I'm glad I know who he truly is now. It sickens me to know that I almost had kids with him, and he would have let me go through my whole life keeping his cheating past a secret from me. I don't know how men like this can sleep peacefully at night after completely ruining people's lives. It's shocking how many of you have went through something similar. I am so sorry to those who have been through a heartache like this. It's made me laugh about how you guys are trying to create revenge plans for me. I really appreciate it, but I'm going to let everything rest. Mostly because it would have hurt me more if I did take revenge. People have let me know that his nice gestures were the bare minimum, but I've never seen anyone do things like that. My mother and father were divorced, so I've never seen love displayed like that. I thought that it was something that only happened in Hallmark films. Thank you for all of your kind messages and comments. I read all of them, and it's helped me throughout all of this. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Thanks for everything. In the comments, Too Thick For This says, Honestly tragic, but better to find out at your wedding than after years of marriage. I don't know how people can keep such awful secrets and not be eaten alive by guilt. I suspect that his frequent romantic gestures were motivated by guilt, like the wives who get an expensive piece of jewelry every time the husband takes a new mistress. Absolutely. Imagine meeting his other family and kids years down the line because I do not believe for one second that he wasn't still seeing her. No sane person is going to crash the wedding of an ex from years ago. Plus, his cousin was in on the whole thing. It wasn't even years ago. She's 23, and he had been cheating for six years. Unless they started dating the minute she turned 14, which would have had him at 17, this dude has been cheating for more than two-thirds of the entire relationship. Honestly, the whole relationship is creepy, and the poor girl is a victim through and through. Am I the asshole for pressing charges on a former friend for shaving my head in my sleep? For some context, a relative of what used to be a close friend of mine who we'll call Gary for this story contracted cancer. I, mid-twenties male, was sympathetic and even contributed $100 to a donation pool for their treatment, but Gary came to me one day and took off his hat to reveal a freshly shaven head. He told me that everyone in his family were doing it in support of his relative, and so were a lot of our mutual friends. Then he asked that I get on the bandwagon. I told him that I didn't want to shave my head because I like my hair. My hair is black, regularly combed, and well styled. He said I could just get a wig or something and had actually brought his shaver kit. He was unboxing it when I told him this was not happening. I don't even really know his relative that he's doing this for, so I'm not doing it, end of discussion. He called me an asshole and left angry. We didn't speak for a week, and then last Saturday I got invited to a party at another close friend's house. It was there that I found out that Gary had tried the same thing on several other friends, and only a couple of them actually did shave their heads. Gary wasn't at the party, so I had a blast hanging out, playing video games, and listening to rock music. But I had way too much to drink and couldn't drive home, so they said that I could just sleep upstairs. I passed out on a bed and it was a blissful sleep until I was shaken awake by another friend who told me that Gary had showed up late and they caught him shaving my head while I was passed out. I saw what I looked like in the mirror and I wanted to scream like I was in a horror movie. Gary even shaved off one of my eyebrows. 
Gary was still there and acting proud of himself, saying, Now you're gonna have to shave off the rest just like me, lol. I was furious and I called the cops. When they got there, Gary fully admitted to what he had done to me and even said that he was justified. The police didn't seem to think so as this is classified as a form of assault. They asked me if I wanted to press charges and the first words out of my mouth were, Hell yes! Gary cussed me out while they took him away in cuffs. I tried getting my hair restyled into something presentable, but there was no saving it and now I'm bald too. Now a bunch of Gary's family are telling me to drop the charges because Gary was off his meds and didn't mean to do it. I was like, what the hell? Because I never knew that he was on meds, but I still refuse to drop the charges. It'll take months to grow my hair back to the way that it was, but all of the calls and messages from Gary's relatives are starting to get to me. Just about everyone else in our friend group has cut Gary out though and say that I'm doing the right thing by not dropping the charges. So now I'm divided. Am I the asshole for pressing charges on a former friend for shaving my head in my sleep? Edit, I want to make something clear here. So many people have said things like, dude, it's just hair, but would they all be saying that if I wasn't a man? What if I was some girl that had hair that took years to grow? Would they be saying the same thing? Sure, hair grows back, but it takes time. If it was something that grew back fast, people would be less inclined to care, but it's not fast, it takes months. And for some who had long hair, years. That's a lot of time wasted growing. And I don't plan on pushing Gary to go to prison, but I don't want to drop the charges either. His family already bailed him out, and while I don't know that he was on meds, I knew he had quite the temper, and even an entitled attitude at times. One example being a lunch, where he wanted us all to combine the check and split it evenly. He got the most expensive thing on the menu. I got a cheeseburger. When we all said no, Gary went off on us for not being good friends. He's always been an ass when he doesn't get his way, and I've only known him for like three years. This incident was a last straw for not just me, but a lot of our other mutual friends. As for the charges, I don't want to send Gary to prison, but I would like him to get some therapy and community service. With the way Gary's acted around me in the past, and what he did to me, I actually wonder how long before he got more violent. I've seen and heard of him getting in fights for less. Edit 2, I've gotten many comments from people saying, you're the asshole, he has cancer. If you actually read what I posted, Gary is not the one with cancer. A relative of his I don't know does. And no, I don't know what kind of cancer. Gary didn't elaborate. He wanted me to shave my head for this person. And when I refused, he left in a tantrum and then shaved my head while I was passed out drunk at a party. I can see why you were apprehensive about Gary this whole time because he has a history and, you know, you gave him the benefit of the doubt. He wasn't too much of a psycho, maybe just a little pinch of psycho every now and then. Keep your distance, have firm boundaries, and all of a sudden he violates you in your sleep. He didn't even make you fully bald, he just destroyed your hair, leaving it patchy by the sounds of it, and shaved an eyebrow off. This man is actually unhinged for his actions here, and while I don't think he should go to prison for this, I do think that he should probably be institutionalized. Community service and everything, yeah, but like, I I'd want some bigger punishment for something this heinous, you know? Not the asshole. In the comments, not the asshole. Contact the DA that is handling the case and let him know that his family is pressuring you to drop the charges. They may be violating the law too. If Gary hasn't learned to take his meds, a little time in jail will teach him that lesson. Edit, I didn't mean to suggest that jail will help him. I believe facing negative consequences for his actions versus getting out of them will help him. OP replies, that's a very good idea. I'll take care of that as soon as I can. Make copies of all the texts, save the voicemails, don't block them, let them spew, as all this info should go to the police. And yeah, not the asshole. Gary is an adult. He knows what'll happen if he goes off his meds. He did it anyway. Sounds like his family might be doing a wee bit of enabling there. No means no. If he hasn't figured it out by now, the authorities need to teach him. What the hell is Gary's problem? What a moron, him and his family included. Why do I feel like Gary's going to use this to try and lessen his punishments? Because that's exactly what whiny, petulant children do. Hey man, that's offensive to petulant children. Check the boxes says, not the asshole. The police called it assault because that's what it is. Block all his relatives but save any messages you already have and report them for harassment. 
Do not feel bad about pressing charges either. He assaulted you and was proud of it. And now, on to the update. So a friend of mine just showed me a video yesterday in which my old post had been read. Honestly, I'd nearly forgotten about it since I was only there to ask if I was the asshole or not, and since I don't want to go through the pain of trying to do an update on Am I the Asshole, I thought I'd just do it here since Entitled spells out Gary pretty well. Other than the shaving incident, he tried to get us to partially pay for his food multiple times by combining the check and dividing it equally when he always got the most expensive thing on the menu, and he even once tried to pull the I forgot my wallet bit. He was described as a neckbeard by multiple people, including the women that he flirted with. He tried to get a married neighborhood woman that was older than him to have an affair with him, and then later egged her apartment door when she refused. That one I only learned about a couple of months after my original post. And no, Gary never saw consequences for doing that. I also learned he stole several video games and DVDs from friends, mooched food and drink out of their fridges, and even went through a period as a squatter for two months by refusing to leave a house that he had been let into by a former tenant, and the landlord actually paid him to leave. Gary's also an extreme hypocrite that contradicted himself more than a corrupt politician. For example, one minute he would be anti-vax, then the next he'd be complaining about other people who weren't getting the C-19 vaccine. Pretty sure he never got it too. I can't believe I ever had any sympathy for this man. To recap, someone a former friend of mine named Gary is related to got cancer, and Gary went to try to get our friend group to all shave their heads. He only got a couple of them to agree, and even brought his shaving kit to my apartment because he just assumed that I'd join in as well and was already unboxing it before I even got the chance to say anything. I told him the shaving was not happening. Well, he decided to make an example of me, and waited until I was good and passed out from drinking at a friend's party. I was so dead to the world that I had to be shaken awake by a friend after Gary got caught shaving my head. He took off one of my eyebrows and messed up my hair beyond saving, and he was laughing his ass off over having done it. So yes, the rest had to come off, and I ended up pressing charges on Gary for assault, and found out he's been on meds for a mental disorder for years, and he stopped taking the meds, which is one of the reasons why he was so loopy. But his tune changed pretty quick when police arrested him, since what he had done qualifies as assault. Gary's family harassed me and tried to make me drop the charges. I not only didn't drop the charges, but I reported the harassment to the police. The only problem is it didn't bloody stop. In fact, it got worse. Mainly from Gary's mother, whom I can see where Gary got his charming personality from. She showed up to my apartment a couple of weeks after the shaving incident to scream at me that I knew nothing about what they were going through, and a little hair wasn't a big deal. I told her my hair was a big deal to me, and what Gary did was inexcusable. Well, that earned me a slap on the face, followed by a swift kick to the nuts, followed by a few more kicks to my body after I went down. It was all recorded by a camera that I had watching the front door. The landlord wouldn't let me put in a ring doorbell cam. One of my neighbors saw her and screamed at her they'd be calling the police. Gary's mom ran, and I ended up going to the hospital with minor injuries. Mostly just bruises, a black eye, and a sore groin. Gary's mother got arrested, and I filed a lawsuit against her for attacking me. I saw her in court twice for both her assault on me and the lawsuit I filed for her assault. This woman had taken several self-defense classes over the years, so she knew how to fight. That had the judge consider her a trained individual, and she was sentenced to six months in jail, given two years probation, and ordered to pay my medical bills. She actually cried to the judge about the money, but he wasn't having it. It took some time to see her again in court for the lawsuit against her, as she was out of jail by then. I was awarded 10000 for the harassment, emotional damages, and lost working hours, and she had to pay all the court and lawyer fees, which she cried about again because she didn't want to pay anything to the man who had ruined her and her son's lives. But she had the money for both court cases because she had no problem paying. But it was around that time that I heard that Gary's relative with cancer had passed away. I don't know any details, just that they had passed on. I admit, that was sad, but I never knew the person. But Gary made their condition his hill to die on when he tried to make an example out of me. Gary's got some probation and community service for what he did to my hair, and he cut contact with our entire friend group and eventually moved away. Where to, I don't know. I don't care either. As for my hair, 
Well, it grew back just fine. It took nearly a half a year to get it back to how it was. My boss had me put out of sight for a while, and I was wearing a hat everywhere for at least a month. I did take that $10,000 that I got from the lawsuit and combined it with my savings for a down payment on a house, so I've since moved into a much better abode. I also have a girlfriend now that's living with me. It was a bit soon for her to move in, but there were extenuating circumstances. We're making it work though, and I'm happy. In the comments, ToastTO says, I'm so confused. So Gary didn't have cancer and asked people to shave their head for someone else with cancer. This sounds really insane. Someone who was probably horrified when they found out their crazy relative was asking strangers to shave their head for them. To the point of two relatives being charged with both assault and harassment. Always take your meds, y'all. Mental illness is not your fault, but it is your responsibility to manage. I don't get how anyone can say that it's just hair. Like, no. No, it isn't when it's something that you take pride in. People find ways to criticize others for things they feel proud of without caring for the sentiments involved. That turned out a lot better than I was expecting, but it feels as though a conclusion like this should be the norm for every story where someone is done so dirty like that. Thank God both the mum and Gary were dealt with. I know people in my life like Gary and I love staying as far away from them as I can. I don't think Gary really got what he deserved. I feel like he deserved more punishment, but sometimes life is unfair. Anyway guys, what is your opinion on that one? Let me know down in the comments below. Our next post is by a throwaway account titled I, 28 male, cheated on my ex, 30 female of 5 years, with my best friend's sister, 21 female. I'm still in love with my ex. To be honest, I don't remember much of that night because I was pissed. All I remember is that I woke up with my best friend's sister, ABC, in my bed. I don't even remember her coming to the party. I was living a nightmare of my own making because I love my girlfriend, now ex, and I didn't know what to do. I told ABC to be quiet and let me think of what to do. I felt shit and the guilt was killing me, but I was too cowardly to confess. Anyway, three weeks later, on Christmas Day, ABC told me that she was pregnant. I knew that I had to step up now. I told my ex that I wanted to break up with her and I started dating ABC officially. We got engaged on Valentine's Day because ABC told me that it was important to her to be married before having the baby. I know that too because I know my friend's family are very conservative. We had to at least be engaged before breaking up the news to them that we were expecting. ABC had a miscarriage last week and it has been tough. I never have been so miserable in my life. I feel bad for losing my child and very guilty because I felt relief. I still love my ex and I can't believe how all my life changed because of one drunk mistake. I was supposed to propose to my ex this Valentine's Day and I even had the ring that I saved three years for. Even ABC was angry that she didn't get the ring because she knew I was saving for this ring. I want to call my ex and confess to everything to her now. I know I can't have her back, but I want her to at least know that I still love her, but that I needed to do the right thing and atone for my mistake. I really want to do that, but my sister who knows everything told me to just let her go. Any advice? OP, my advice is you should have done this from the get-go and not do this wild rat race with the sister. What are you thinking? I would honestly take that advice, let them go, and let bygones be bygones because you've missed the mark. If you do this now, you're going to open a can of worms that you were not prepared for. In the comments, OK Soup says, Can you imagine how funny it would be if you changed your entire life for a pregnancy that never existed in the first place? It's actually not funny, but it almost sounds like what happened. Break up with her. Tell your ex or don't tell your ex. Either way, leave her alone after. And please get tested. I know this isn't what you want to hear right now, but STIs can go unnoticed for years with no symptoms. You don't want to end up giving a future partner cervical cancer and your and their life changing overnight. Oh honey, no. This girl was never pregnant. If your timeline is accurate, she should have had an ultrasound to confirm pregnancy. They would have measured the fetus to calculate date of conception, etc. If she had a miscarriage, she would have had an ultrasound to confirm all the remnants of that fetus had left her womb and they might have had to perform a DNC if that was not the case. She played you, maybe took advantage of you, but most definitely lied to you. You made some horrible, horrible decisions too. Step away from it all. 
Don't contact anyone, not this girl and not your ex, other than a therapist for your mental health and maybe someone to help you navigate the legal waters if you decide to pursue legal action against this girl. There's honestly no way out of this, even though you potentially did nothing wrong due to consent problems. If you were both blacked out, we can't really assign blame there. You're probably just going to have to move on from your ex. Love doesn't mean very much when trust was broken and you pull the whole breakup engagement stunt. Your idea of stepping up wasn't really helping anyone and in fact blew your life up even more. Who cares how much being engaged before having a baby matters to somebody that you don't love and weren't with? If she didn't want the baby without being married and she was able to consent, why on earth did she have sex with you? Whole batch of stupid. And now onto the update, titled, Thank You. Thank you for still reaching out to me. I've been busy. I won't be updating the main post because of the amount of hate I got last time, but for the few who showed me support and helped me understand my situation better, I am fine now. I have confronted my fiancé, ex, and my best friend, her brother, about what happened, that I didn't remember any of it, and that now I've talked to others, you, about it. A lot fell into place. I realized that I was taken advantage of. They weren't very understanding, and my friend accused me of using his sister and now wanting an out. I felt then and there that this was the end of our friendship. My sister also thought it was weird that I felt abused, and however I tried to explain it, she couldn't understand my feelings. I've decided not to engage with her in this subject again. When I broke off my engagement, my family wasn't happy about it. They don't know many of the details, but at the same time, they respected my decision, if reluctantly. They loved my ex fiance I have started therapy, and I've found out that I still have severe PTSD from that night. I just didn't know that it was PTSD. I just thought I was in, lack of a better word, dying. I finally want to say that I've spoken to my ex-girlfriend. I told her everything, and how sorry I was for hurting her. I left the part that I still love her out. I never really stopped because I didn't want her to think that I had any other motives other than saying I'm sorry. She is the one that I hurt most, and yet she was the one who believed me without any hesitation, believed everything I told her, and she repeated what many of you who supported me here said that I was taken advantage of. She has been my support with the therapy, and she even came on some of my sessions. I don't think she wants me back as a partner, and I won't ask her to. I'm just glad that I have her friendship. She has been my rock and my blanket, and I couldn't ask for better. In the comments... Is it just me or does someone else also suspect that the best friend's sister was probably already pregnant when she dragged OP to bed? Or it was a lie the whole time and the miscarriage didn't happen? In one of his comments, OP said the miscarriage was right after he asked for a paternity test and she readily agreed. Lol? Seriously? She definitely was never pregnant then. What a freak and a weirdo. I really hope that OP gets his deserved happy ending. I'm glad his ex believed him, and I hope they can rebuild together in whatever way they may. I also hope that ABC rots. She committed a heinous crime, and frankly, I very much doubt she was pregnant. What a horrible human being. Am I the asshole for leaving my surprise wedding because I felt blindsided? Last week, I, 30 female, was invited to a supposedly fancy party by my long-term boyfriend, Mark, 32. We had been dating for five years, and while we had discussed marriage before, there were no immediate plans for a wedding. Excited about the event, I dressed up in my best attire and arrived at the designated venue. As I entered the grand hall, I was completely taken aback to see all of our family, friends, and acquaintances gathered, eagerly waiting. It turns out Mark had orchestrated an elaborate surprise wedding for us without my knowledge. Everyone erupted into applause as I stood there, shocked and overwhelmed. I just felt a mix of emotions. While I love Mark and had dreamed of our future together, the idea of getting married without any prior discussion or consent felt like a breach of trust. So I pulled Mark aside and tried to express my concerns and reservations about the surprise wedding. I explained that I wanted a say in the planning process, to be a part of the decision making, and to have the chance to prepare mentally and emotionally for such a significant milestone in our lives. However, Mark dismissed my concerns, saying that he thought that it would be a romantic gesture and that I would be thrilled. 
In that moment, I faced a difficult choice. Go along with the surprise wedding, putting on a smile despite feeling unsettled, or stand up for my autonomy and voice my true feelings. I ultimately made the decision not to proceed with the surprise wedding, much to the disappointment and confusion of our guests. Now I find myself at odds with Mark, our families, and even some of our friends who believe that I overreacted and spoiled a beautiful moment. However, I firmly believe that a marriage should be a joint decision, with open communication and shared expectations. Everyone's excuse for this is that I've always talked about marrying Mark. And again, the problem isn't marrying him. The problem is not having any say in my wedding. Mark thought that I'd appreciate it, because I always spoke about how stressful planning a wedding must be. Yes, I think it's stressful, it is, but I'd still like planning one. After this whole ordeal, everyone asked if Mark and I were ending things, in which I replied no. I emphasized towards them and Mark that I still wanted to marry him, and most feel like this is making me more of an asshole since I just wasted a perfectly fine wedding. So am I the asshole for refusing to attend my own surprise wedding, even though it was intended as a romantic gesture? Edit, I previously admitted this from my post because of the subreddit's word count guidelines. I love surprises. It's a thing everyone has known me to love. Mark knowing that, and the fact that I wanted to marry him, and also said wedding planning was stressful, thought that a surprise wedding would be perfect. A surprise engagement is bland, because it will always be a surprise. But not a wedding, lol. He threw this wedding for the surprise, but explained how in a couple of days we could do a courthouse wedding to make it legal. This was his only way to surprise me. I love spontaneity, but legal marriage or not, I wanted a say in my wedding. To choose the perfect date, to choose my bridesmaids, to pick out my cake. Again, due to these thoughts, everyone thinks I'm the asshole, because I could have went along with a party and do a redo legal wedding. But again, I felt blindsided and confused, so I left. Yeah, with the edit, I do think it gives a lot more context as to why he did it. I don't think he's an asshole per se for doing it. It seems as though it was a huge shot in the dark that could have paid off immensely, and it didn't go to plan. He didn't do this maliciously, no one came maliciously, it seems as though this was all just huge miscommunications and misunderstandings. Damn, I actually can't decide whether he's an asshole or not for doing this because he embarrassed you in front of all of your friends, family, acquaintances, and that kind of feels like an asshole thing to do, even though those weren't his intentions. I'm always repeating to myself that phrase of the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And yeah, I feel like he knew the risks of this one and he did assume that you would say yes to this wedding and not walk out. I think for the personal embarrassment that's caused to you by this wedding and the reputational damage that you're incurring as a result of this, I actually think that he's a bit of an asshole for that just because I put myself in your shoes and think, I wouldn't want to be in your position. That would be cringe and like really embarrassing and hard to explain. So I guess, not the asshole for this one. I was gonna go no assholes here, but upon further thinking, I'm landing on that. In the comments, Gallon Smokescale says, Get the hell out of that relationship, not the asshole 100%. You know that Mark's an asshole when he takes his moves right out of Gaston's playbook. Flomojo Blow says, He dismissed my concerns. Huge red flag, and not the asshole at all about leaving. A marriage is a partnership, not an ambush. Also, how was he able to get a marriage license without your presence? Not the asshole. You can have a wedding without a marriage license, it's just not a legal marriage at that point. Some areas have common law marriage. If she went through with the wedding, that could lead to a valid marriage in certain states. And now, on to the update. I want to start off by thanking everyone for the responses I got and the advice. However, I would like to reiterate that Mark is a great person who did a stupid thing. If you knew me though, a surprise wedding seems like something that I would love. Unfortunately, I didn't. After talking to Mark, we both got to the conclusion that we didn't do anything wrong. Both of us are valid in our opinions and the situation was an odd one. Unfortunately, Mark spent a lot of money on planning this wedding, as well as family members. He doesn't think that we have the funds to plan another wedding until a couple of years. 
I will be honest, that choice is really messing with me. I'd like to be married sometime soon and start our life as a family. I know weddings don't have to be extravagant. We could always throw a small party and once we have enough money to do a second one, but I don't know if that's what I want. I honestly feel selfish and regret not using the surprise wedding. I feel like I wasted a bunch of money. I used to stand by my choice confidently, but now I'm not sure that I made the right choice and all this stress is wearing me down. Anyway, I'm staying with Mark, probably will get married soon, and have my dream wedding in the near future, hopefully. Again, thanks to all the responses, and I hope that people from Am I the Asshole also see this post. In the comments, Tail Over T says, Personally, the fact that he blew all the wedding money on a surprise without any consultation or care at all to what you actually wanted, then blew you off when you tried to express your very genuine concern, is still raising red flags for me. Not gonna say it has to be a deal breaker, I don't know him, but the general lack of concern or care towards your wants and needs, and a willingness to spend large amounts of savings on something for you that you absolutely did not want at all, then trying to pressure you into it because he backed you into a corner, is to me still very much cause for concern. But I recognize that I've only seen a tiny piece of this puzzle, and I wish you the best. I think this is perfectly stated. I find this update very concerning, mainly because of this. Quote, we both got to the conclusion that we didn't do anything wrong. While this maybe, and I'm being generous here, could have been a well-intentioned but terribly misguided idea at best, since OP is saying that it wasn't meant to be a controlling and manipulation tactic, the fact remains that he blew all of the wedding money completely unilaterally without any thought of consulting her. This is a major breach of trust. Now they are out a lot of money, read thousands, that was completely wasted on what is now a bad memory for everyone involved. He humiliated her in front of all her friends and family, robbed her of any autonomy, ambushed her with a wedding that she didn't get to plan or be excited for, and on top of all that, spent so much money, family money too, and it's now derailing the wedding slash timeline she actually did want. He took so much away from her with this stunt and still thinks that he didn't do anything wrong? No apology? No acknowledgement or understanding at all on why this was a terrible effing idea? Can he still not see the problem? I also wish you the best OP, but I also hope that there's going to be some real conversations about how to handle huge life decisions and money as well. Because if he still can't see why he was in the wrong here, it means that he will do it again. I hope you end up in a relationship where you can actually trust your partner, whether it's with Mark or not. Good luck. He also spent joint money on this? He could have made a surprise proposal and have a party, but having a surprise wedding for which he spent so much money that you were not being able to have a wedding is beyond dumb. Do whatever you want, but next he's going to surprise you with a house or some other idiotic surprise. Surprise, I got a loan. Surprise, I sold our house. Surprise, I quit my job. Surprise, we're moving 1,000 miles away. My ex attempted to do that. One of the many reasons he's my ex. He thought that he'd apply for jobs in another state and surprise me with moving plans when he got one. I will say that him making all these elaborate plans and spending that much money, especially without consulting you first, is very concerning. My ex also did that, just not in the manner that Mark did. Lenithriel says, It sounds like you're making excuses for him to avoid facing the fact that he's a jerk. Editing to make it clear that I was this person before, mentally and emotionally manipulated, to believe that despite the not-so-great decisions he made and the acts that he did, that he was still ultimately a great person. Turns out the bad decisions and things he did really were a reflection of who he was and I was going to continue to allow myself to be gaslit and controlled if I stayed. A surprise wedding like Andy and April in Park and Rec is great. A surprise wedding to one of the prospective spouses is no bueno. Even if you love surprises, that is a step too far. Taking away someone's autonomy and forcing them to make an awkward scene in front of family and friends is just too much. Is it weird that her parents or family were on board with this idea? Nobody mentioned anything to her before the day? 
He blew their money on a surprise wedding as well. Now they are broke for the next few years. That is not a good sign for the relationship. The fact that she herself says, if you knew me, you'd see why he'd think this was a reasonable idea, makes me think that she's seriously into surprises to an extent that her family, knowing her, genuinely thought that she would be into it. I don't understand that, but that appears to be the situation. And yeah, that about wraps up that story. I still feel terrible for everything that's gone on here, and as these people go into the situation more and dig deeper, I feel even worse. I've never met anyone that into surprises, and maybe they are both their own kind of crazy and weird, but to me, outside looking in, his actions are absolutely a relationship breaker. I don't know how many people would stay in a relationship and why they would if they did. But hey, that's just my opinion. I'd love to know yours down in the comments below. Our next post is by user Am I the Asshole Stepson Prob, titled Am I the Asshole for Cancelling My Stepson's Birthday Because He Facepalmed Me? I married my husband two years ago, and my relationship with my stepson, who is 12, has never been well. We tried everything, but nothing seems to work. His behavior towards me is so terrible. He shouts at me, swears at me, and calls me the worst mother ever. His 13th birthday is tomorrow, and since my daughter, seven females' birthday, is only 10 days apart, we usually celebrate them both in the same day, and they're fine with it. I asked my stepson who he has invited, and that's when he face palms, the gesture, and tells me that he has already answered this question before in the worst tone ever. This is where I lost it, and I told him that because of his attitude, I'm going to cancel his birthday tomorrow. At first he didn't believe me since it's not the first time that I intended to punish him without actually doing it in the end. But this time I was serious, and to prove it to him, I called his grandparents and told them that his birthday got cancelled. He started crying, begging me not to cancel, but I told him it's too late. I got berated by his grandparents because of this, and they told me that I don't have the rights to cancel his birthday. As his mother, I'm pretty sure that I can do what I want, but they weren't listening to me. They even told me that tomorrow they are coming to his birthday with the gifts, even after I told them not to bother, because I won't open the door. Am I the asshole here? Um, yes? Yes, you're an asshole for this? What in the overreaction Christ is going on here, OP? All he did was give you some attitude. He's 12 years old. All 12 year olds give you attitude. What is going on in your brain? You're really going to smite a 12 this hard for not giving you perfect attitude all day every day? I bet your daughter at 7 years old gives you attitude every now and then, but because she's your daughter by blood, I'm sure that you don't have any problem with that. In the comments, Pink Purple Blue Pride says, You're the asshole. Lady, what the actual hell? Birthdays are never something that you should cancel unless the kid majorly screwed up. It is such a shitty thing to do. You only get so many birthdays as kids, and those memories and experiences are so, so, so priceless that the fact that you're punishing him like this for something so damn petty is making me see red. I also noticed how you never actually said why your relationship is strained, and only talked about how he was rude. You are obviously leaving a whole lot of justification on his end out of this. You need to pray to God to give you some empathy and some sense, and then you need to uncancel his birthday and make it up to him tenfold, over an effing face palm. Absolutely ridiculous. I wish your stepson the best. Exactly. Maybe figure out why your stepson is being rude, rather than skipping to the punishment. Well, because his stepmom is horrible, and he's a teenager. There, puzzle solved. She doesn't even refer to herself as his stepmother. This woman actually had the audacity to say, as his mother, I'm pretty sure I can do what I want, and then act surprised that his biological grandparents, who most likely already know how much of an entitled asshole OP is, wouldn't listen. As if she actually has the authority to cancel a 12-year-old's birthday party. For F's sake, OP, your stepson is probably going through enough already, with a global pandemic going on, and having to deal with an entitled asshole step-parent who doesn't even recognize their role as step-parent. 
and refers to herself as his mother, the least you could do is not ruin his birthday too. Seriously, I was around the same age when my dad got into a new relationship. If his new partner started calling herself my mum after only two years, I would have been done with her ass too. You're the asshole. Please answer me what a 13-year-old and a 7-year-old have in common other than being in the same household that would warrant them sharing a birthday. Or does it just make life easier for you? You're an asshole because you're clearly vying for dominance with a child that you were supposed to be protecting and loving. Kids are little shits. They will be disrespectful and rude. It's in their nature. You're supposed to be the adult. I hope his grandparents come and take him out for the day. And now, on to the update. Since many of you have called me an asshole, and after the conversation I had with my husband and his parents, I realized that I did indeed overreact, and I shouldn't have made such a harsh punishment. Some of you suggested that if his attitude persists, I should find other ways to punish him, like not allowing him on the laptop, let him do some homework, etc., and I will start doing these sorts of punishments if needed. Unfortunately, due to me not contacting his friends on time, his birthday party still didn't happen on his birthday. It was postponed two days later, but my daughter still got to celebrate her birthday on that day. My son was obviously really upset, and in the morning he came to me and was on the verge of crying, asking me if I did actually cancel his birthday party. I told him that unfortunately his friends already made plans, but if he behaves, I will still do his birthday after two days. Surprisingly, he was really polite with me these days, probably because he really wanted his birthday party, but I'm really happy to see that he stopped raising his voice at me and stopped with these rude gestures such as face palming. His grandparents were also really upset with me, and they're the ones that ended up arranging the party for him instead, as they said that I am too irresponsible. Both birthday parties ended up being successful, and until now, I still haven't had any severe arguments with him, and I'm really happy with the way that things are going. Thank you to everyone who sent me DMs, to support me, and to provide me tips, especially the stepmothers who are going through similar problems. In the comments, Apprehensive Data 567 says, So just to be clear, 1. You did cancel his party, 2. When he asked you about it in the morning of the party, you told him his friends had already made plans, which was actually because you didn't contact them. And three, his grandparents had to arrange it because they rightly judged that you were too irresponsible for this. You sound like an evil stepmother from a children's book. Did you apologize to him at least? It doesn't sound like you did. This isn't about finding other punishments. Who the hell punishes someone over facepalming themselves? This is about you not treating him properly. There is just so much wrong here, and your update makes it clear that you do not understand what is wrong. Oh my god, you still haven't got it through your head that a birthday party isn't something to hold over a child's head. When he came and asked you if you cancelled it, instead of apologizing and telling him that you overreacted and having a conversation like any sane adult would, you still used the birthday party as blackmail. I promised him if he behaved it would happen two days later. What the actual F? Lady, get your head out of your ass. You're the asshole in general with him. When I was a kid, I saved up a bunch of money and bought a Game Boy. Basically, all the money I had made, I had saved until I was eight. I loved that Game Boy. My dad knew that I loved the Game Boy, the Game Boy that I had earned, and he would threaten to take it away, not just if I misbehaved, but if I did something that he personally didn't like, or if I didn't want to do something with him. One day he came into my room and I was playing my Game Boy, and he said he wanted me to play a game with my little brother. He threatened to take away my Game Boy if I didn't. He also started to tease me about how I liked the Game Boy, and he could take it away any time he wanted. I threw it out the window. I learned at a very early age that I would rather not have access to something than to have someone hold it over my head. Remarkable Moose 6950 says, Am I wrong? She wasn't going to have the party anyway because she forgot to invite the kids' friends. Does anyone else think that she was looking for a reason to cancel? Yeah, too many people missed this. She says later that the kids invited could not come because they have plans for that day but the timeline seems to be all in the same day, which is the day before. The first post gives a hint. The 13-year-old had told her at least once before the names, and she forgot them. 
Then the grandparents took over planning the party because she was unreliable. She 100% didn't even work on his part of the party to begin with, and asked a second time with the hope that when the friends were called, they would already be busy. She didn't want him to have the party at all, and was just looking for an excuse. Posted by user throwawayfsister, titled, My sister's life is falling apart, and I am happy. I, 40 female, have been a long time lurker on Reddit, never shared my story. This is a typical Reddit story that you'll hear, but I wanted to scream it to the world. Thank God for Reddit. So, my sister, 43 female, Ursula, yes I'm using a villain's name, has always made my life a living hell. She is extremely manipulative and a narcissist. Ursula will be nice to me when she needed anything, but then will ignore me. Growing up, I always thought that we were really good sisters. We did not have the typical sister fights of one being jealous of the other. Now, as an adult, when I think about it, I think she has hated me. She would always give me backhanded compliments like, your face looks better with your glasses, or you have a boy crush? Ew, I thought you were a lesbian. I used to be a tomboy. Growing up, I always strived to be like her. She was everyone's favorite. She was helpful and kind, or at least that's how she made us believe. She would always make me feel insecure about my looks and the people I date. The first boyfriend I had when I was 17, she made me believe that he was not good for me, blah blah blah. I broke up with him, and I know, my fault. I moved out of state for college. My sister went to business school while I studied engineering. I would come home from holidays and would still have to hear all her backhanded compliments. When I was 21, I started dating my ex-husband, Jordan. My sister was dating someone else at that time, so I guess her focus didn't fall on Jordan. Also, Jordan wasn't her type. We dated for three years and then tied the knot. For four years, I have been happy with my life. During that time, my sister announces that she is pregnant. We all thought she got pregnant by her then-boyfriend, Remy. One day, I went to visit her and bring some food for pregnancy. She gave me a key to her place and I went inside without knocking. I had permission from her. The surprising thing I saw was Jordan's shoes outside. I went inside her bedroom because I was feeling a bit suspicious, and yeah, you guessed it, they were screwing butt-ass naked. Long story short, I divorced Jordan. I was still in pain and very devastated. My parents supported me, but their focus shifted way more towards my sister and Jordan. Yes, she was pregnant with his child. It was painful to see them together. I never got a sorry from either of them. They were just like, hm, shit happens, man. I moved away from home. Eight years ago, I got a contract to work in England. I moved there. It was a fresh start to my life. I met Peter, who was a single dad. We fell in love and got married and had a son together. I don't have contact with my sister. I have very low contact with my dad, who gives me all the insight. Jordan and Ursula got married and had two more kids. That's all I knew about them until recently. Jordan cheated on Ursula and they are having a nasty fight. The cherry on top is that two of their kids are not Jordans, so Ursula hasn't been faithful at all. My dad told me that it's a mess, Jordan and Ursula will get a divorce, but she's pressing for alimony. I hung up the phone and made myself a drink. I'm glad that I am thousands of miles away from all of that drama. My mom had called me too and said that she needs me, but I'm not sure if I'll go or not. As much as I enjoy seeing Ursula's life going to hell, I'm not sure if I want to engage in that drama. Edit, since people are curious and want to know everything, I wanted to add more details. My sister was cheating on Remy. Remy was a really sweet guy. He was very devastated when she heard my sister isn't pregnant with his child, but rather it was Jordan's. Remy moved on and had a wonderful wife afterwards. I still follow him on Instagram. My parents were mad at Ursula, but she's a manipulative biatch, convinced everyone that Jordan coerced her, and said that he would divorce me if she didn't have sex with him. She made it seem like she saved my marriage by screwing my husband, lol. Classic. I got married in London. My relatives couldn't come because of the long distance, but my father did. Mum couldn't come because at that time she had a back surgery. Edit 2, editing again because people have this misconception that my parents were bad. No, they were not bad. They were normal humans. I also understand they were in a tough spot. 
I mean, you can't just expect a parent to choose between two kids. Besides, they were going to be grandparents and cannot leave my sister alone. Yes, she is a biatch, but they never let her get off scot-free. My parents supported me in my divorce and paid for my post-divorce therapy. They cannot cut off Ursula entirely because she was pregnant. My dad and mom have a strained relationship with her and Jordan. They haven't disowned them because of their kids. My dad refused to walk Ursula down the aisle at her wedding, which I did not attend. I did keep in contact with them after I moved to England. They were supportive of me. The reason my mom couldn't come to my wedding, as I mentioned, she had a back surgery. My mom is in her 60s, so she has a lot of health issues. My dad attended. My mom hardly could fly, but she did visit me after my honeymoon. She was devastated that she couldn't meet my son because flying was difficult and then we had COVID. I'm going to my hometown for some business. I would have gone either way regardless of the phone call. I haven't seen my mom and dad for four years now. I miss them. I do hate my sister, but I do not hate my parents. In the comments, Ragadast335 says, The best for you is to watch the drama from a safe distance, don't get close to the shitstorm. In a way, your sister got revenge for you against her and your ex. Enjoy the spectacle, but don't get involved. OP replies, I might have to go back because of my job temporarily, but I'm not sure if I want to visit my home. I personally wouldn't want to visit either, but if you're guilt-tripped into it, you can show off how you're living your best life. Show up like Snow White, lol. Happy as a clam. Make sure to keep this husband away from this shitstorm. Not saying this because he might cheat or anything like that, but more to save yourself a lot of heartache for in case she decides that she wants a piece of your happiness, because how dare you're living a good life and have things going perfect and well for you. There are many ways that she or the rest of your family can cause drama in your current life. Keep husband and kids far, far away from this crap. Trust me, if your date is cheating on their partner, they will cheat on you when they become your partner. People never learn. I'm happy that you have a happy life and are seeing your sister's pot boil over from hundreds of miles away. Stay clear of that thunderstorm and make yourself some popcorn. Watch for the other side of the pond. Your life, your family, and your money is yours. The clowns, monkeys, and Big Top for that circus have nothing to do with you, and you should offer the same support that you were given. You've moved on, so keep on keeping on and keep your contact low to know. You have peace. Peace is priceless in an unquantifiable way. Having her in your life both then and now didn't, isn't, and won't bring you anything but turmoil. Your family is focused on her historically, and now they can again just this time without the interruption or inconvenience of, and to, you. And now, on to the update. So I've landed on the soil of my home country with my husband and son. My mom and dad received me from the airport. I was so happy to meet them after so many years. Their faces look pale as if they haven't eaten or slept for a long time. My mom was happy to meet my husband and kid, especially my kid because she hasn't met him. I asked them not to tell my sister that I'm here. I'm only here for a few weeks and then I'll be gone. I am currently staying with my aunt. Now on to some insights about my sister. My mom said she is living with her along with her kids. I got some details on my sister. She was having an affair with her former boss who is married and those two kids are actually his. My sister got a beating from the boss's wife. From what I'm hearing, the company her boss works in actually belongs to boss's father-in-law. So yeah, her boss is going to be jobless, and my sister has switched jobs way before this happened, but the affair continued. But because of all this drama, she is literally on the edge to lose her new job too because the company's owner is a good friend with boss's wife, so you can imagine the kind of quicksand that she put her foot to. Jordan has quit his job too because he's adamant on not paying my sister alimony and not wanting to pay child support for the kids that belong to the boss. He will be suing the boss for child support as well. They constantly fight a lot. Jordan is probably going mad because of it, according to my mom, and he was also having an affair with his co-worker. My mom wants to kick my sister out, but because of her kids, she cannot. She hates her, but she doesn't want to punish her kids because they are innocent. Honestly, I feel bad for those kids too. They do not deserve such a mess of parents. Also, just so you know, my parents aren't bad. They have supported me a lot, 
The only reason they still talk to my sister Ursula is because of her kids. I feel bad for mum because she only has a few days, and along with her illness, she probably will be too sick to deal with this. I know my sister will somehow know I'm here, but I'm prepared for that as well. I do not want to see her because I know that I'll be dragged into her drama, but I will enjoy the few weeks that I have with my husband and kid. In the comments, is there a way in your country for your parents to have custody of the kids, even if temporary? Like if the mother gets kicked out of her messy jobless life, but the kids are proven to be safe and well kept with the grandparents. Seems messy to have kids in a position where everyone's cheating on everyone and losing their minds and getting their asses whooped and whatnot. And OP replies, I asked them, but they said grandparents' rights can only be exercised if one of the parents has some kind of drug problem or mental health problem. Narcissism is not a mental health problem, apparently. I would say look into the laws in your country if you can. There must be some case for incompetence and neglect, i.e. can't hold a job. To be honest, my biggest takeaway from this is thank God OP never had kids with Jordan. Why can't people just stay faithful? You want to sleep around? Then don't be in a committed relationship, and especially, don't screw with your family's partners for F's sake, or anyone's partners. Stay single. Yikes. This question drives me nuts. I'm very low contact with my brother. He had his pregnant wife and then knocked up his mistress. It was so messy, and I don't understand why people can't keep it in their effing pants. I actually felt bad for Ursula for a hot second, because people who act like her are typically paralyzed by insecurity and self-hatred, until the husband stealing happened. Screw both these assholes. Looks like karma came back to bite them from where it counts. Cheetah's gonna cheat. I'm waiting for the update where Ursula makes a move on OP's new husband, too. I just don't understand how people can be like that. Cheating on her boyfriend, stealing her sister's husband, though I guess he was a cheater to begin with, so not much of a loss, then cheating on him with her boss, only getting pregnant from affair partners, like she's an animal, only acting out of instinct and not a human, with morals, capable of controlling her own actions. Well, what a very messy life uh, all of those people have, bar OP. I'm just going to continue the sentiment. I'm so happy that OP has remained strong and has carved out a little niche in her life that is perfect for her in this crazy world, despite all of that absolute just uh, trouble happening across the pond. It is so easy to perpetuate those cycles, and it's so amazing to see people break them and escape those chains. Anyway, I'd love to know what you guys think of this one down in the comments below. Let me know. Our next post is by user LiveAppointment4219, titled, Am I the asshole for refusing to pay for my daughter's wedding because she won't let me walk her down the aisle? I'm a 48-year-old man, and my 19-year-old daughter has always been an independent thinker. I raised her to be independent and to think for herself, which I've always appreciated. However, we recently hit a bit of a snag. She got engaged and decided that she doesn't want me to walk her down the aisle at her wedding. She argues that her mother and I don't own her, therefore we have no right to give her away. I feel hurt by this because we never treated her like an object or a piece of property. Rather, we've tried our best to provide her with a wonderful life. Her stance seems pretty extreme to me, and despite discussions, she's refusing to budge on the issue. I respect her choices, but I feel she's disregarding our feelings completely. As a response, I told her that if she feels that way, then I won't be paying for her wedding. I don't want to come across as controlling or manipulative. It's true, I don't own her. I also don't owe her a fully funded wedding. She can pay for her own wedding if she's insistent on this stance. I'm feeling quite conflicted about this. Am I the asshole? Edit, so this isn't making the wedding about me? Walking her down the aisle, while all eyes are on her anyway, and then sitting down is hardly making the wedding about me. It's about her attitude. She's had every opportunity in life so far, and to exclude us from this day is a spit in the face. It's a rejection of everything we've done for her, sacrificed for her, given her. It's selfish. 90% of wedding traditions and symbolism had roots in things that we don't acknowledge today. Should we stop all of them too? The rings, the flowers, the dress, the wedding party, the cake, the flower girls. A father walking his daughter down the aisle has been about respect, pride, love, and honoring the father and daughter relationship for far longer than it was about ownership. 
Independent thinking does not mean rude or selfish thinking. Being an independent thinker does not give someone the license to disregard or disrespect the thoughts, feelings, and perspective of others. Independent thinking is about maintaining the ability to think critically and form one's own opinions while remaining respectful and considerate of others. It is a balance between asserting individuality and engaging in meaningful and respectful interactions with others. Edit 2. Also note that our relationship is not so weak that this disagreement will ruin our relationship. We are still close with each other in spite of this. There is zero chance of her not inviting us to her wedding, regardless of who pays for it, or cutting off contact and withholding grandchildren. I feel sorry for anyone who suggests that as a possibility. Likewise, there is zero chance of us refusing to go to the wedding or cutting her out of the will. In life, people disagree even strongly. It's a natural part of life. We don't end lifelong relationships over it. Man, I feel like whatever I say here, you guys are gonna cook me in the comments. And for that reason, I'm taking the humble middle ground of no assholes here. I do understand where OP is coming from here, even more so with the edits. It's a bit of a letdown to be like, hey, this is a great little tradition to be a part of, and it sucks that you're taking that away from me. And I also understand where OP's daughter is coming from. She's 19 years old, and she is thinking critically, she is trying to break tradition. That's fine, I encourage that. Though I don't understand why he's funding the entire wedding, uh, that's a bit weird. It is a gift after all, but that's a lot of money. If this is your typical wedding, that's a lot of money to be taking away just to not be walked down the aisle. I think both are very extreme in their decisions here. I just don't know why people are getting married at 19. That's so young. Please just live your life a little bit and back up these viewpoints with more life experience behind decisions this heavy that affect people. In the comments, Embarrassed Debate 60 says, I can understand why your feelings are hurt. However, were you planning on paying for the wedding as a gift to your child to celebrate their marriage, or because you would get to symbolically give your child away to a spouse? Were you only going to fund the wedding because you own your child? Therefore, if you don't own your child, you don't owe paying for a wedding. Per your attempt at throwing in your child's face, their stated reason for not wanting to be given away. Your child isn't saying that you treated your children like property, but they probably see the symbolism and where this tradition stems from and don't wish to participate. Try to respect your child's independent thinking and point of view, and you shouldn't expect your children to always compromise their principles because of your feelings. It would be fine to talk with them and share how you feel, but you're the asshole for taking your feelings as a reason to not support your child. That said, I don't think people should expect that weddings are paid for by parents. But if there was a reasonable expectation because you funded a sibling wedding, it's not fair for the gift to be contingent on this one thing that is clearly important to your independent thinker. Maybe you can talk about other ways you can be involved in the wedding, especially as tradition doesn't seem to be that important to your child. Always choose listening and talking it out over threats and ultimatums, and it doesn't count as talking it out if the parties are only talking to convince, not listening and trying to understand the other's point of view. Striped Tomato says, right? Just because he doesn't see her as property doesn't mean the tradition isn't rooting in just that very concept. You're the asshole, OP, and doubly so for then basically holding what should be a goodwill gesture and gift hostage just so you can get your old-fashioned way. Don't act shocked if you're not invited based on this. This tradition originated when women were treated as chattel. A woman was transferred from the ownership of her father to her husband. Father is of course not obligated to pay for a wedding, but it seems disingenuous for him to praise her independence until it clashes with his desires. Seems that he isn't above financial and emotional blackmail. This will definitely have an impact on the father-daughter relationship. There is no way of knowing whether she will choose to go low contact, no contact, as a result, but it sounds like dad is willing to take the risk. OP, you're the asshole. And now, on to the update. For all the you're the asshole people out there, I've decided to give my daughter a gift in the same amount as her older sister's wedding cost. She can use this for whatever she wants. For the not the asshole people out there, thanks. Most of you get it. My daughter has also agreed to figure out a way to include us in a way that doesn't involve giving her away. 
We are still in the early wedding planning stages, and she is almost 20, so she will likely be 21 before the actual marriage. Thanks for the concern, I guess. I approve of the groom-to-be, if that matters to anyone. Don't say that, OP. You're digging a hole if you say that. We disagree, but that doesn't mean that it's a relationship-ending event. My daughter is laughing hilariously at all of you, saying that she will disinvite us from the wedding or cut us off from grandkids. I just feel sorry for you all. That is petty and manipulative, and regardless of what you all say, I've raised her better than that. Yeah, as much as you guys in the comments cook redditors for always jumping to the low contact, no contact, disinvite from the wedding, cut you off from the grandkids. That is quite an extremist way to view things, but I guess different folks, different strokes, uh, different kind of situations in life. Sometimes that is warranted, sometimes that's not. I'm very much glad that in this situation, uh, there was open communication between the daughter and the father, and they have worked something out. They have found a middle ground together. Because yeah, this update gives a lot of information that would have been really helpful in the original post, and would have helped people make judgments, being like, she's not someone that's vindictive and holds grudges against you. She's not going to go scorched earth over this one situation. She knows the difference between actions and words that are petty and manipulative, and where she is right and where she's okay to push back against you. I guess for my final word on this, I'm very happy that things turned out this way, as we've seen in the past, things have gone way worse than this. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments of this one. Am I the asshole for not wanting my girlfriend to repay her school loans to her parents? So my girlfriend and I are planning to move in together after three years of being in a relationship, and money came up as a point of discussion. We are both fine with splitting up expenses in a 50-50 manner. We live in the EU, she is in university, I am soon to be working as a decently, but not greatly, paid government employee. The problem is that my girlfriend, years ago, chose to move to a big city and study at a private university instead of a public one. Her parents, likely being overconfident in their economic possibilities, decided to pay for my girlfriend's studies, but on the condition of being paid back as soon as she gets working, seeing that she could have chosen a public and cheap uni instead. She has to repay about 50,000 euros in a country with a median net salary of 20,000. My girlfriend's degree is not really marketable, and such a debt would cripple our start in life, hurting us much more than it would hurt her parents not to get the money back. As an addition, my opinion is that parents should facilitate their kids' life, and they should not expect children to be economically neutral or positive to them. My girlfriend assured me that she would pay back her parents from her own salary, but really, that would be money coming out of our already thin paychecks, and I would end up needing to compensate for her initially low, and then even lower salary after the loan payments. I told her that I don't care for her parents, and I feel morally fine cutting ties with them. I told her that we as a couple need to make us two a priority, and that I don't want to be collateral damage to her and her family's irresponsible decisions. I'm not suggesting to flip off her parents, but politely explain to them that we have a serious need of money, and they don't. She proceeded to get mad, reassuring me that we would not feel any monetary damage, which is literally untrue, and that eventually we will be fine. I'm coming out the gate swinging, saying that, you know what, you should destroy your relationship with your parents because you made a promise to them, uh, and we're gonna be together forever, so what's the problem with you cutting them off? Have you not read that post back and seen how unnecessarily evil an action like that would be? You are such a piece of shit. I'm sorry. You are... You you suck, OP. You suck. I, I think you should just go find someone else without crippling amounts of debt. Without a useless degree, a non-marketable degree either. Jeez, it doesn't seem like there's many positives about this partner that you're with. Hey, you're the asshole. In the comments, Lizzie says, You're the asshole. You don't have to live with her if this is so bothersome to you, but she owes her parents this money back. Your opinion that parents should facilitate their kids' life, and they should not expect children to be economically neutral or positive to them, is just that. Your opinion. It doesn't really matter to anyone but you. Exactly. And that's so mature of her to pay them back, because she gave them her word and she is keeping it, and your actions say a lot about you honestly. She should think twice about it. 
The coolest idea I ever heard from parents with kids that insisted on paying unwanted rent etc, if you truly don't want the money back, is putting it into an account and waiting for a big life event, looking for a house, getting married, and giving her the money that she paid you then. You sound like you have a great kid. I paid for four years of college, but loaned one of my kids some money for a masters. I had kind of forgotten about it, and about a year after they finished, my daughter comes to me with the biggest smile on her face, hands me an envelope and a check for the full amount. It wasn't money that I needed to live on, but I took it because it meant something to her to save, and she was so proud. I opened a separate account with that money, invested it, and when she got married, I gave her two times what she gave me back to help finance the wedding. I could have said, it's fine honey, you keep it, but I knew my daughter. She's very strong and fiercely independent, and it was important to her to repay what she said she would. JRM1102 says, You're the asshole. Oh lord, so you just decided her parents no longer needed to be in her life? Just because? Because he would rather lose family than money. Not his family, of course. Hers. The cute thing is, he thinks they will never need them in their life, so just cut ties with them, XD. Future abuse flag. Pushing for family isolation. And now, on to the update. I'm done getting lynched. Most of those who commented did not read my post, did not get my point, downvoted my explanations, and know F all about me, my girlfriend, and our relationship. Yeah, look, OP, this reply from you? It's not speaking wonders, that's for sure. Obviously, the downvoting of my clarifications reflects the need to lighten up my straw man. I don't see any reason. I think I have been polite and discoursive, and I have only gotten insults back. Probably shouldn't have asked teenagers how to handle adult life. I initially kept it out of the scope of this post, but I did help her these last times financially. I do not hold it against her, and I do not want her to pay me back. I want her to have a successful life, even if we eventually might not end up together forever. I don't want her to cut ties with her family, and I would hate for it to happen. That's why I suggested talking and explaining. I have been accused of wanting to control her money. Apart from the ridiculousness of the fact that I'm barely trying to control my money, I have been getting groceries for her out of my 500 euros salary. I will leave this here, which I believe summarizes the situation well. One of the commenters says, No assholes here. If she needs to pay 50,000 euros on a salary of 20,000, she will not be in a position to contribute to a house or to have the time and money for children. Even if she's paying it out of her salary, that means that the next 5 to 10 years are going to be affected by this debt. By extension, anyone who's partners with her will be affected also. I can't fault her for living up to the agreement with her parents. She has also been making a point of splitting costs 50-50. She acted entirely ethically. The problem is, if you're in a relationship, her debt is going to affect the life that you can have together. I won't blame my girlfriend. I advised her against it. But ultimately, she made a choice as a 20-year-old something inexperienced girl, but her parents should have known better. Ultimately, I don't want to be the one paying 90% of the rent, utilities, and food, because we need to repay a useless debt. I wish to establish a thorough and well-thought-out plan to make a family of us. Morally, it's wrong to fleece her parents, but it's wronger to cripple us too for a decade. That makes me the asshole, but it makes me an asshole that has a point, a valid one. Also, the US is an effed up place and honestly, you should ponder how my situation, the worst kind of loan situation where I live, is regarded as nothing bad. It's just debt, where you live. And, and that's it. That's the end of the post. This guy, I, I don't think he made a good point. If I'm being honest, it sounds like he doesn't like the criticism that he was facing. She's not at fault for this situation. Her parents shouldn't have known better. They made a good decision for their child to get educated. You say that you didn't want her to cut ties with the family and you'd hate it to happen, but you're actively asking her to cut ties with her family because of this useless debt. I don't know about you guys, but OP seems to be in the depths of denial. Good luck to that relationship, hey. What do you guys think of this one down in the comments below? I'd love to know.